In the early 1970s, an experiment on the psychology of imprisonment was carried out at Stanford University by psychologist Philip Zimbardo and his colleagues, who created their own jail in the basement of the Stanford Psychology Building. The students who volunteered for the study were carefully tested. Each had to be psychologically and physically healthy to participate. Some students were then randomly selected to act as prisoners, while others became guards. The researchers surprised the prisoners by having them arrested at their homes and dormitories. The prisoners went a series of rituals to establish their new lowly status. They lived in tiny cells 24 hours a day, cut off from their usual surroundings. The guards, however, only worked eight-hour shifts, and they returned to their normal routines as students when off the job. What happened surprised everyone, including Zimbardo. The illusion became the reality, the boundary between the role each person was playing and his real personal identity was erased. Nice boys became brutal guards. Healthy kids got sick. Active ones became passive and zombie-like prisoners. The situation became so overpowering that many of the prisoners developed extreme stress reactions and had to be released. But no one ever said, I quit the experiment. They had lost all perspective. You come over there. Should I act You should act it out. You be the brand of Frankenstein, and you be Frankenstein. I want you to walk over here like Frankenstein and say that you love children. What kind of guard would you be, sadistic or supportive? Would you be a conforming prisoner or a heroic resistor? The prison study, like Milgram's experiment, is not typical of research in social psychology. Some psychologists feel both studies violated ethical guidelines and should never have been done. Times even Zimbardo forgot he was an experimenter and acted like a prison warden. Though the experiment was meant to last two weeks, it was called off after six days. Once you put a uniform on and are given a role, I mean, uh, a job, saying your job is to keep these people in line, then you're not certainly not the same person as if you were in street clothes and in a different role. You really become that person once you put on that khaki uniform, you put on the glasses, you put on, you take the nightstick and, you know, you, you act the part. That's your, that's your costume and uh, you have to uh, act accordingly when you put it on. It still is a prison to me. I, I don't look on it as an experiment or a simulation. It's just a, a, a prison that was run by psychologists instead of run by the state. I began to feel that, that that identity, that the person that I was that, that had decided to go to prison was distant from me, was, was remote until finally I wasn't that. I was, I was 416. I was really my number. And 416 was going to have to decide what to do. It let me in on some knowledge that, that I've never experienced firsthand. Uh, I've read about it. I've read a lot about it. But I've never experienced it firsthand. I've never seen someone turn that way. And I knew you're a nice guy. You know? You, you understand? Know I do. I do know you're a nice guy. 
been I don't, I don't get that because I know what you can turn into. I know what you're willing to do. If you say, oh, well, I'm not going to hurt anybody. Oh, well, it's a limited situation. It's over in two weeks. Well, you in position, what would you have done? I don't know. <laughs>